Today, what I want to talk to you about is how to find the area under a curve for some function between two given x values. So in this particular case, you know, I have this curve here, f of x. I have my x equal to a right here, my x equal to b right here. I basically want to find this whole area right here, this area a. This whole area. That's what I'm looking for. How am I going to do that? Well, what I want to teach you is something I call the basic calculus idea. I'm going to sum it up at the end of the lecture. But the basic idea is that we want to approximate this area with something that's easy to calculate. That's the point. So for example, one of the things that's the easiest thing for me to calculate the area of is a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is very simple, the height times the width. Let's try to figure out how that would work in this particular scenario. And let's do something very simple. Let's just use uh, four rectangles to approximate the area under the curve over here. So if I called the true area A, well, I'm going to approximate A with the area of, and in this case, we'll just use four rectangles because I can calculate the area of a rectangle easily. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to come over here, I'm going to take this interval from A to B, I'm going to chop it up into four equal pieces, like that. Once I have these four equal pieces, I'm going to draw sort of the sides of the rectangle coming up, like this, like this, like this. And what I want to do, so now I hope it's clear that we have sort of width over here, Notice that each of these widths are the same. And what I want to do is I want to figure out, you know, what, the, what should the height of the rectangle be? So I hope you can see I have four rectangles here. One, two, three, four. What I'll do first is I'll take this rectangle, and then I'll just look at how high the function is on the left part of the rectangle. This is, we call this the left endpoint. So if I were to do that, I would get the following rectangles. I'll get one rectangle here. I'll get one rectangle here. I'll get one rectangle here, and I'll get one rectangle here. I can calculate the area of each of these th guys very easily, and I hope we can see that, you know, this is maybe not the best approximation, certainly a, a reasonable approximation. Did I have to kind of go on each little subinterval here that I have to evaluate on the left endpoint? Not really. I could have evaluated at the right endpoint. So let's say I did that. I'm going to do it in blue. It's going to get ugly. Let's say I have the same rectangle over here, but instead of evaluating on the left endpoint, the height being the left endpoint, I'm going to evaluate the height being the right end point. So this guy comes at this. Then in this case, I got this blue rectangle. Again, here's the second, the second interval. I take the right end point. Here's the blue rectangle there. For this guy over here, I have the second rectangle. I look at the right end point of this, I'm sorry, the third rectangle, I look at the right end point, that's this guy right here. And then for this guy, I look at the, again, the fourth rectangle, I look at the right end point over this time. Like this. So, if we were to look at the blue scenario, it's like these red guys aren't even here. None of this is even here. Just the blue thing. So, I hope you can see we had two different ways of kind of approximating the area here. I did it when I used the left end point, that was the red thing originally. Now I did it with the right end point, that's the blue thing. You might be guessing, hey, why don't we just go in the middle? Instead of looking at the left and look at the right, go in the middle right here. Take that rectangle. Yes, do that too. Okay. But this is the basic idea, this is the basic strategy as to what we're going to do. Next thing we need to worry about is left end point, right end point. How do I write it down? How do I write it down precisely using mathematical notation? 
that's what we want to talk about next. So, let's look at the situation where I have the left endpoint with four rectangles. Like what we have over here, the red rectangles are magically gone. What do we have? Well, we know that the area is going to be approximately equal to the area of these four blue rectangles. So, I could write it like this, if we come over here, I could say the area is approximately equal to the area of the first rectangle, A1, plus the area of the second rectangle, A2, plus the area of the third rectangle, A3, plus the area of the fourth rectangle, A4. Where, I hope you could see the area of the first rectangle is just this area here. Like this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, and this is A4. I add all four of those areas together. You know, it's not so bad and you only have four rectangles, but if I had like a zillion rectangles, I don't want to write down A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A zillion for going on forever. So we have a, a notation that we use called sigma notation. Sigma notation is an easy way to add together a whole bunch of things. So the way we indicate you want to add a whole bunch of things together, we use the Greek letter sigma. I want to specify that I'm adding together areas together, so I'm going to put A. But I don't want to specify if I'm doing the first, the second, the third, or the fourth, so I'm going to put an index I here. This is like a variable. When I is equal to 1, I mean the first one. When I is equal to 2, I mean the second. When I is equal to 3, I mean the third. When I is equal to 4, I mean the fourth. In the sigma notation, you want to indicate where I begins and where I will end. I begins with 1, that's the first rectangle, and it ends with 4, in this case, it's the fourth rectangle. So instead of writing this, I can just write this, and it means the same thing, so we would call sigma notation. This picture is great, you know, you've got four rectangles, doesn't look like the best approximation exactly. Let's see what happens, instead of using four rectangles, I use ten rectangles. So in the last half second, magically, four rectangles became, ta -da, ten rectangles. You look at these ten rectangles, first of all, I hope you can see this looks like a better approximation. In other words, the more rectangles we have, the better approximation we have. But already, I hope you can see, writing A1 all the way through A10, it's going to be a pain in the neck. So, typically what we do is we put plus, we put dot, 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 plus, and then you write the last guy here, A10. When you have sigma notation, it's far easier. You can just start at 1 and go up to 10, so you just change that to a 10. Again, I hope you can see, notation is nice, approximation is better. Let's do 20. <laughs> 20, magically. 20 rectangles. When you look at this guy, First of all, I hope you can see, you know, approximation is a little bit better. All this little air, area error has gotten much smaller. When you look at our notation, it would really stink to have to write out A1 through A20. You can think about it, I come over here, the very last guy is going to be 20. That is easily fixed when you're looking at sigma notation. Just put 20 over here. And as I just said, when you look at this situation, your approximation becomes better. Now I want you to use your imagination. Instead of 20 rectangles, I take 40 rectangles. Instead of 40 rectangles, I take 1,000 rectangles. Instead of 1,000 rectangles, I take a million rectangles. I come over here, I have a million little rectangles come like this. Can I did that all the way across there? When you look, when you cut this thing up into a million rectangles, and you look at one tiny little rectangle here, when it gets very small, you can't really tell if you're using the left endpoint or the right endpoint, because the endpoints are so close together. What does that mean? That means basically, it doesn't matter which endpoint we're going to take. So what I can say now is I can say, look, 
If I want a better approximation, I shouldn't just stop with 20. I shouldn't even stop with a million. You have the power of calculus. So I'm going to make it go from 1 to some arbitrary number of rectangles n. But I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. This scenario will actually give you not an approximation anymore. This scenario will give you the true area. Because the amount of error is going to shrink to zero as n goes to infinity. The next lesson we'll talk about, we are going to investigate how do I actually do calculations. If you give me a specific f of x, a specific a and a b, can I calculate the true area? The answer to that is yes. You have to think about what should the height of the rectangle be, what should the width of the rectangle be, come up with, with a formula for each one, multiply those guys together, and get some nice, or maybe not so nice, expression.